Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. Please visit our website, cscatlanta.org, for a complete list of live and recorded events. We invite you to sign up for our newsletter to stay connected to all future programs. Making a broccoli soup that's, that has um, maybe more nutrition in it, has some white beans. Uh, we're using nutritional yeast to give us a little cheesy flavor, coconut milk, um, um, olive oil, onions, garlic, celery, carrots. Um, I make this at home for my kids. They eat it. I thought, why not try it here? Um, we're going to do a little twist. I don't normally roast the broccoli at home, but I'm going to do that today, and we're going to see how it turns out because nothing like doing a demo in front of strangers and maybe <laughs> I like the stress, right? Is it going to work out? So uh, we're going to roast the broccoli. So that's going to be really cool. It's going to give it a real nutty flavor, uh, roasted flavor. I think it's going to be, I think we'll like it. Uh, we are still, we're going to bounce back and forth with recipes today because there's different things that we have to do. We're going to toast some grains um, for our toasted uh, farro salad. I forgot that I did farro last time. So actually I picked up some uh, green wheat uh, frica which is just another, it's like an ancient grain, a grain. It's, it's all it is is green wheat. Frika is the process that they put it through, um, but they harvest it when it's green and very young and tender. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to toast that grain just like we would farro. So we're going to treat it the same exact way, except it's going to give you guys a little bit variety instead of having farro. We're going to try this. I think it's going to be good. It's the same salad and also shows you that you can use any grain you want in this salad. Mix and match, and we'll talk more about that as we go on. So we're gonna toast the we're gonna toast the farro. We're gonna roast the broccoli. We're gonna make a preserved lemon dressing. We're gonna talk about preserved lemons. I brought some with me that have been up for about two weeks. I've had some that are two years old sitting in a jar at home. It's just lemons and salt and thyme, right? Thyme as in not the not the herb, but on your yep days and weeks. Um, and there's recipes for that as well. You can easily make that at home. We're going to turn it into a salad dressing to go with olives. It's citrus season, so we're going to use um, these little little cuties, clementines, uh, mandarin oranges. I peeled some ahead of time. Uh, it's a very simple salad, but we'll talk through the dressing and whatnot. Um, so we have preserved lemon dressing, preserved lemons, the vinaigrette, broccoli soup, and the salad. So I think what we're going to do first is we're going to roast the broccoli in the oven, get that nice and charred. While that's charring, we'll go ahead and toast the farro <clears throat> and then the um, frique. And while that's cooking, we'll go back and finish the broccoli soup, and then we can go and make the salad dressing and the, and the uh, salad. Okay? Are we good so far? Still hear me? Still good. Right. Thank Any you. Any questions before we get started? Oh. How do I put Yeah, okay. So how do I cook the broccoli at home? I, I would get... The onions, carrots, celery started like we're going to do in some oil, get that cooking. <clears throat> I would add my stock and my broth, my, maybe my coconut milk, get everything going. I would just throw my raw broccoli right into the soup and get that cooking. That's just easy way, right? We're just going to challenge ourselves a little bit here today. <clears throat> um, so we're going to go ahead and just get this broccoli chopped up. <clears throat> See, I'm going to use some stems as well <clears throat> um these just because for sake of time <clears throat> these are good to use as well the bottoms what i usually do if i'm working in a restaurant or in the kitchen we'll just take off the little bit of the end of that that's the real rooty part and then we'll peel the rest and use that this is perfectly good okay it's really good actually um because the outside is a little tough the outside is tough, but the inside, inside is very tender. Just the outside's a little woody. So if you put it in your soup and you try to puree, it's going to be stringy and whatnot. But um, if you peel that part off, you can roast it. It's good to go. Okay. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, so I know we're all concerned about how much food we're wasting at home as well. So um, I'm just rough chopping all this, this up right now. Then I'm going to hit it. I'm going to throw a little bit of olive oil on it. I have the broiler already going. 
Um, I promised I would make enough food to feed everybody today. So mm -hmm. just be patient with me. We're going to work through this. If you have questions, go ahead and shoot them out now. <clears throat> I'm not peeling those stems. A little higher up, you're fine. Um, it's when you get about midway through the stem, they get kind of tough. And I am rough chopping. This whole soup, you don't have to be particular about how you cut your celery or your onions because we're going to blend it, okay? We're not worried about knife cuts. Remember when we hold a knife, those of you who have been here, I put my thumb here, my forefinger here, and I wrap my fingers around here. That way the knife doesn't slip out of my hand when I'm chopping. <clears throat> um, this soup works well with other types of veggies, maybe cauliflower, right? Um, carrot soup would probably be fine. You guys make a lot of broccoli soup at home? Anybody doesn't like broccoli here? Because it's about to smell like broccoli here in about <laughs> 10 or 15 minutes when the oven starts cooking these broccoli. So broccoli does have a smell. Um, it's called a cruciferous vegetable. So it's in that Brussels sprout family that we played with last time. And uh, cauliflower, you know, when they, they start cooking, they do... <clears throat> They do smell, but I think that means that they're really good for you, right? Okay. I wouldn't make a soup from Brussels sprout. Um, you could try and get back with us. Let us know. <laughs> I don't like the texture of really soft Brussels sprouts. And then they just, I, you know, because remember last time when we cooked the Brussels sprouts, we left them kind of crunchy. And that's, yes. that's how I like it. They to were eat good. Them. Um, I'm just going to pour, I'm just going to pour some uh, olive oil on top of these. You, you can do it in a bowl. Um, it's easier and then just toss it with the oil and make sure everything's evenly coated. I'm not going to season them. We're going to season the soup. I'm going to throw these in a broiler and, uh, we'll probably go about five, 10 minutes and we'll see how they're looking. We just want to get some char on them. <clears throat> um, Okay. So that's working. Um, next, we want to toast our uh, green wheat. We're going to dry toast that. No oil, no nothing. We just want to get that good nutty flavor. So that's the green wheat. Remember, that's harvested when it's tender and young. Uh, has a lot of good flavor. We're just going to dry toast it so there's no oil or anything on there. After it, after it starts getting hot, we will um, we'll add our stock or broth or water or whatever we need. There should be recipes on there for everything for you guys at home. Um, <clears throat> so we were talking about spices and, and grains and things like that in the past. Why do we toast? Because we want to get more flavor. It, it gives it a more nutty flavor, and I like that. Especially in a grain salad, we want to be able to taste that. And I also like these grains for my salads to be a little chewy. I don't want to cook them till they're mushy. That's why I like to pick grains that hold up well, um, like a farro, like this green wheat. We're going to undercook it just a little bit um, because that's the I want chew and crunch a little bit. I don't want like a mushy kind of uh, grain, like an oatmeal or or a, or a barley or anything like that. So. We're just toasting that. And then we are going to. So the broccoli's working. Um, clean as we go, right? In the kitchen. That way we're we're busy and we're pressed for time. Everything is is moving. That's that's going well. Okay. Uh, we're going to get this pot going. Bear with me here. Okay. That's working. Okay. There we go. Okay. Back to onions. So we want to start, um, just like any soup that I make, I start with onions, carrots, celery, Onion, celery, depends. Um, this one, we're going to do onions, carrots, celery, garlic. Uh, we just want a lot of flavor in this broccoli soup. So that's what we're going to do. So remember, onions. Onions, you have the 
the little stem, you have the root. So what I like to do, remember, knife, thumb, forefinger, I cut that, cut the stem off. Then the root, I'm going to split the root right in half. What the root's going to do, it's going to allow me to hold that onion together as I dice it up. I'm going to peel, peel that off, peel the skin off, right? All right. Good stuff. That's looking nice. Okay. So, stem. What I do is my palm of my hand. I'm going to make three cuts almost all the way through, but not entirely. You want to leave it intact. Let that root hold it together as we dice it. I'm doing a fancy dice just to show you guys how to dice. Um, and then I go down the middle, same thing, all the way, almost to the end, but not all the way. The root's going to hold everything together, okay? And then I'm going to dice it, just like this. Again, you can rough chop this thing because no one's going to no one's gonna judge you because the soup is going to be uh, pureed. Add our oil. Same. The already diced up? Yeah. 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 So, so the question was, was do, do I buy everything? already diced up carrot, celery, onions? You can buy those, and they do make things convenient. The only thing, I, we may have talked about this in the past with Brussels sprouts, the only thing, one, you pay a lot more money. And, and two, um, sometimes if onions are, they let off gas and they start to break down other veggies if they're packed together mm -hmm. or they'll get mushy and you've just paid, you know, five, six bucks for uh, vegetables and they're not that good, right? So I, I, I don't buy already diced myself. Um, I got a carrot, it's organic carrot. I'm going to leave the skin on because that's what I do if I buy an organic carrot. I don't, I don't waste my time peeling it. Um, we're just going to dice that up. Is that um, side camera not working? Um, that's what I'm we'll get that going. That'll give us a little color and a little bit of sweetness to the soup. Um, the coconut milk that we're using is unsweetened. We don't want to use sweetened um we would not want to use sweetened soup or sweetened uh, coconut milk. Garlic, I buy whole cloves. Um, I've said it before, I like to buy the ones that have the purple skin. I just think they're the, they tend to be better uh, cloves of garlic inside. Uh, those. You can find them. If you go through your grocery store, you'll see garlic. It's sitting out. Um, just try to pick the ones that have the purple skins on them. They're really nice. The garlic, I peel it back. I crush it. And I'm going to peel it, peel the skin off. Right. Then we're just going to mince that. Am I moving too fast? Too slow? No? Good. Okay. And there are recipes here. I hope I'm following them the way they should be. That's in there. That's doing well. Give that a little stir. So that has oil, garlic, carrots, onion, celery. When I was coming up in the restaurant business, the, the chefs always said, don't use these parts because they're bitter. But then I never really found that to be true in my stocks and things. So I started using it and I use it in my soups. I don't see a reason to discard it. So I love I actually love the little leaves. They make good salad if you want to pull them off and throw them in your the salad that we're going to make. They're really nice there as well. Um, we're just going to rough chop the celery like that. Throw that in there. That's working. 
going to add broth to our our green wheat. We're going to let that cook. Okay. That's cooking, that's cooking. We're stirring this really easy. Oven mitts, that's what I was looking for. Checking on our broccoli. Okay, that's got some nice char on it. This one can go to the top. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> so we're gonna throw those right in there like that. Really easy. I use foil on the the pan. You can use parchment paper if you want if you have it. I don't know what's more affordable. I know parchment paper can get really expensive. Um, I'm sure foil is as well. Stir that around. Smells good. We'll just give that other pan a minute. Um, while it chars on top. Turn that on low. Okay. Okay, so the grains are cooking. Broccoli soup is working. That's going to be nice. Um, while those things are rolling, let's talk about preserved lemons. Um, anybody make preserved lemons, use preserved lemons? Mm -hmm. No, they're pretty neat. Um, we use them a lot in the restaurant world. These have been up for about a week, like I said, but um, ideally you probably want to get a couple months on them. But when we make them, we, all we take is, I'm going to show you, take our lemons, and we cut them into segments. Um, you can cut them again if you want. Put them in a bowl. Don't let me burn my broccoli. <laughs> I haven't burned anything here yet, so I'm trying to keep my record going. Um, some recipes you'll find online had a little sugar in these. I've never done uh, sugar in mine. I've always just used salt. So these are cut. What we do is we add a generous amount of salt. I do have recipes for everything, guys. Um, and we mix them together like that, coat them really good in salt. What you can do at this point is wrap it in plastic, let it sit on your counter for about a day. All that moisture is going to come out, that good lemony juice stuff. That's what we want, right? And then we're going to shove them into a jar and have that liquid in there and then let them sit on our counter. You can put them in your refrigerator too if you feel uncomfortable <clears throat> with that. Um, I'll go by and just flip them every couple of days as the juice come down. Eventually, this thing will be full of juice. They're really, really good. We're going to use them for a salad dressing. Um, today, we use them for anything you want, really. Um, you can mince them and put them in fish. Um, if you're cooking fish, <clears throat> what we like to do is we're going to take that pith out, right? And then this part, this part after a long time becomes very, very tender to the point where you can mash it with your finger, right? And that's, that's when it's good. That's when you can use it like as a seasoning, anything, pasta, fish, meats, whatever you want, just a little bit of acid with and salt, you can use this and it, <clears throat> it's very vibrant. And then we'll, you can mince them up, you can chop them up, you can smash them up, whatever you want to do. Um, any questions on that? You're worried about that broccoli. I'm not worried about that broccoli. No, I'm not worried. I think that broccoli is doing just fine. I think you would see smoke pouring out of here by now. All right, I won't stress you out any longer. <laughs> All right. 
we'll put the broccoli in here. <laughs> and we'll get the stock in there so it gets cooking while we're making our vinaigrette. Then, then we can go ahead and make our salad. Jeff, Mike, somebody asked if have, using the preserved lemons would make the salt content higher in your dish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something to be aware um, of. Preserved lemons are, they have a lot of salt on them. You know, it doesn't take a lot of lemon to really bring out a flavor um, of something. So, yeah, I mean, you would not, you cannot use a lot of them. Um, it will become overpowering, but um, just a, a little bit, you know, this goes a long way. I can't tell you exactly how much salt is in that, but... Um, it, there's a lot of good flavor in just that little bit of lemon. So, you know, on the flip side, you might use less salt if you're just using just a little bit of lemon um, for flavor. Okay, let's wrap this soup up and let it cook. Um, we're going to add our white beans, right? That's going to help thicken it up. So a lot of broccoli soups call for potatoes. Um, I don't know. I'm not a fan. I think I'd rather eat it a little thinner. The potato, to me, just steals away from it, makes it just a little too gluey and, and starchy. Um, the beans are nice. Um, next, we're gonna add our we're gonna add our broth, right? I need more than that. I use the uh, better than bouillon. I've used it before. This one's pretty nice. Uh, it's a veggie bouillon. You just add water, stir it up, and add it in. Um, works well. Goes a long way. It's cheaper than the, the broth that you buy in the box. Um, and I think it has more flavor. Better than bouillon has a nice line of of uh, bouillons. Veggie is probably my favorite. Their chicken is good and beef as well. We're going to add that. We're going to let that cook. And then we'll finish with the coconut milk um, and nutritional yeast. And then we'll go ahead and blend it back into the pot and our soup will be ready. Okay. Uh, so easy. I Try to make things for you guys that are easy. I know the salad might seem a little, with the grains, a little more complicated, but you can cook these ahead of time. Ideally, you would want to cook them the day before, let them get cold, um, sit in the fridge, or you can do it warm. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. You're in control of how you want to eat your salad. Um, I just wanted to show the toasting process and different types of grains. These, uh, This green wheat is available at Whole Foods. I saw it today. I brought this one from work, but I wanted to make sure that it was available in the store. And it is I, it is at Whole Foods, probably not at Publix or Kroger. Okay? Um, it smells really nice. Okay. Uh, we want to make a dressing. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw these lemons in there like that. Okay. Um, so the last time I made a salad dressing in a bowl, I want to puree this one because I want to get those lemons nice and smooth and and uh, ready to go. So we're, we're going to same process. We're going to add mustard, right? Because mustard is our, anybody remember? Very good. Mulsifier. Excellent. We're going to add a little vinegar because we need it. Um, that's going to help hold everything together as well. Again, everything's measured out in my recipe, so don't worry. Um, and we're going to add our oil. Okay, this is grapeseed oil. You guys use that? I like, I like grapeseed oil for my salad dressings because, to me, it is a super neutral oil. Um, it holds up well. It doesn't break down. Um, like other oils, I really don't want to use a fancy olive oil, uh, in a salad dressing because the fancier olive oils, they have that really nice grassy flavor that we like that we finish with. 
um, but I think it overpowers our salad dressing. So we want the lemon to shine in this. So we want to use an oil that's not going to steal the, the thunder away from the lemon. Does that make sense? So most of my salad dressings, I'm either going to use grapeseed or I'm going to use a veggie oil. Um, I'm going to turn that soup up just a little bit. You didn't tell me to turn my oven off. All right. Okay, so we have lemons. We have the mustard, our emulsifier. We have our vinegar. We have our oil. We're going to finish with a little agave. Um, as a sweetener, you can use honey. Feel free. Uh, maple syrup works well. Okay. Any questions? So toasted sesame oil comes already toasted. Yep. So, man, it's really strong. So that's something you want to be really careful with. Um, you can use toasted sesame. The question was about toasted sesame oil. You can use those in salad dressings if you're making some kind of, you know, Asian-inspired dressing that you want to use with sesame and, and soy or, you know, things like that. I have used it. It's just really, really strong. Yeah. Um, you're not going to toast your own. You can toast your sesame seeds, but you're, you're certainly not going to make your own uh, sesame oil. But it is very strong. Chef Mike. Go ahead. Somebody asked in the uh, chat with the preserved lemons. They can't tell if you're using the lemon, just the lemon or the peel. I'm offer. using the peel. Okay. Yeah. The question was about the lemon. Remember, we want to get rid of the, the seeds. I guess that's called the pith, right? The, the seeds and the membrane and all that. So we take that out. Again, after these sit for about two months, it's going to pop right out. You don't need a knife. You can just use your hands. It's going to fall right apart. It's really, really tender. Um, okay. And... Good stuff. I'm going to taste it real quick. Okay. I'm tasting for the lemon. To see if it's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to add just a splash of water just to thin it out. You can do that with your salad dressings instead of going with the vinegar. All right, perfect, beautiful. So you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it's really, really smooth and nice. Um, okay, our grains should be good. Mm. Yep. I'm just gonna give them another, another second. Broccoli soup. Okay. All right. So we've made our dressing. Our grain is cooking. Our broccoli soup is working. We want to assemble our salad. So what we're going to do is fennel. We're going to shave. We're going to shave fennel with a mandolin. Anybody have one? Yeah. These aren't super expensive. Um, these are super dangerous. Uh, yeah, they, they will cut you. They will cut you. They're very sharp, uh, especially when they're new. I don't know how new this one is, but um, they are sharp. They are dangerous. I've seen a lot of people, including myself, cut their finger with a mandolin. It happens, right? So we just have to be very careful. Um, what I like about them, especially with the fennel, we want this to be super thin, right? It's hard to cut fennel um, super thin with a knife. 
It really is. I mean, you know, it's just you're going to get chunky pieces no matter what you do. Um, so that's why we like to go to the mandolin um, to help us with that. So fennel, any questions on fennel? The bulb, uh, licorice kind of flavor, really nice, anise. Um, I like to use the, they call these the fronds on top. I like to use those. I'll pick through those and put those in the salad as well so we're not wasting. Um, these parts here, you can cook those down, <clears throat> maybe like in a stock, like a veggie stock. Um, cut them in the little strips and use them for whatever. You can pickle them. I know we did some quick pickling here before. Um, if you follow a recipe online for pickled fennel stocks, those are nice. I've seen them in... Uh, I know the fancier bartenders use them for like Bloody Marys and things like that now. So um, feel free to pickle your fennel tops. Um, probably pretty easy to put them up and let them sit for a little while and get nice and uh, tender through that process. So you're not wasting those as well. But we're just going to go ahead and shave these down um, without cutting our fingers. Right. We don't want to. Um, I shave it right into a bowl, nice and thin. There we go. Sorry, I'm just turning up the soup. Okay, I'm turning that off. That's perfect. Okay, here we go. You guys are quiet. Okay, here we go. We're shaving our fennel. You're going to get it falling different pieces and things like that falling apart. Just do the best you can. Um, if you get nervous, just pull it off to the side. We can go back and cut it with a knife if we want. Um, I'm nervous in front of a crowd because I don't want to cut my finger. And if I cut my finger, what am I going to do? I don't know where the Band-Aids are. <laughs> we got people watching me. It's, oh, is it on you? Okay. You're the first aid lady. I got it. Good. Yeah, without getting too graphic, what is the worst kitchen accident you've seen? That I have seen? Yeah. Burns. I saw a thumb come off. Oh, my gosh. Is that too graphic? No. <laughs> uh, Users be warned. No. You know, things happen in the kitchen. You just get, you get so busy and you forget what you're doing. If you're daydreaming, you know, just looking around, um, you really have to be, you really have to be focused. And I, that's in your home kitchen as well, right? If you're cutting something and you keep cutting your finger, you're going to, you're not going to want to cook anymore, right? So remember when you're using a knife, use a sharp knife because a sharp knife, you don't want to cut yourself with a dull knife. Always cut yourself with a sharp knife. Um, if you're going to cut, just, yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, I've never seen major things. You know, we all cut ourselves. Um, the thing is, I don't know if you guys watch cooking shows, but there, there's a lot coming out now about fine dining. I worked in fine dining for years, 15 years, and, you know, it's the brutality of the business. And it's – you you don't want to cut yourself because chef's going to call you out. He's going to be mad. And that's how it was back then. Things are getting better now. They're changing the, the mentality in kitchens to be kinder and be nicer. And we all have to remember that when we're working with um, younger people that are learning how to cook and, and things like that. But I, um, you know, just being patient, but I, I like that they're showcasing that now. I think there's a show called bear or something that came out. Um, kind of highlighting a lot of what goes on in restaurants. A lot of chefs are getting in trouble now for what's going on in restaurants with all kinds of bad things. Um, a lot of that stuff is true. It's a really hard life. Um, it was, I think it's getting a lot better now, but a lot of that, you know, going back to cutting yourself, you, you know, we always, we always had super glue when we we're working the line, you know, a busy Saturday night, you're, you have so many tickets coming in, chefs staring at you. You cut your finger. What am I going to do? Because you're going to get, you know, first he's going to humiliate you and he's going to like 
kick you off the line. Now you lost your position. So um, you keep super glue around and duct tape. So we would quickly super glue our finger or whatever we caught, wrap some duct tape around it, and we keep rolling. You know, your buddy would cover you for a minute while you did that. But, um, yeah, those are my kitchen suits. Good question, Emily. Thanks. <laughs> Good story. Yeah. So we're just going to finish shaving this up a bit. Um, there we go. So we have our fennel. Um, we have our scraps that we're going to pickle um, some point down the road. Those will stay in your fridge. You can put them in a bowl, wrap them in plastic till you get to it. Do a quick pickle on it, and uh, you'll be great. Soup is working fine. I think. Okay. Should be boiling by now. I think it is. Okay. All right. Um, let me put some gloves on. I don't want to use gloves for this because we're going to eat this. We're not going to cook it. <clears throat> so I have my shaved fennel. This was a dish that we served at a restaurant that I worked at. Um, I can't remember what we served with it, but I think it was like octopus or something like that. Um, but we're just doing, we're just going to do it um, as a salad with a grain. We did not have a grain on it. So I've added that in as a, another component. So very simple though. Um, I made this for the holidays for the, for the family uh, for Christmas. So it's really easy to make at home, get a mandolin. They're pretty cheap, probably 15, 20 bucks for one of those. You're going to shave your fennel. You have these beautiful <clears throat> uh, clementines, easy peels. They peel right apart. Satsumas are great. Satsumas, they're another one that they're growing here in the South. Um, super sweet. But what I like about them, you don't have to use a knife. You just peel them apart. We're going to throw them right in there. Um, like so. Need an assistant. Okay. Any questions? Ah, uh, uh, grapefruit is good with this. The only thing with grapefruit, as we know in a hospital, it, it's um, <clears throat> it's an antidote to some medications for heart patients. So we can't use grapefruit in a healthcare setting, and you may want to refrain from that as well. But if you can't have grapefruit and you like grapefruit, it's pretty good in here. Now, grapefruits aren't as easy to peel, you know. Um, I wanted to bring one, but then I thought maybe I shouldn't because I didn't know who couldn't have it. Um, but with grapefruit, what you would want to do is <clears throat> you'd want to peel the skin with a knife around, right? And then you would want to segment it with your knife. And that's how you get the grapefruit meat because grapefruit is, <clears throat> has a lot of strings in it as well. And you don't want to eat those. My voice, I'm losing it. <clears throat> okay, and then we're going to use Kalamata olives. Um, they're already pitted. Um, everybody like olives? Everybody like everything I'm doing here? Okay. Um, the olives are nice. Yeah. Now be careful because olives have salt in them too. They can be salty. Um, I would drain the brine off of them and just put them in. You can crush them up. There we go. Question. Yeah, right. I don't see why not. You could probably use canned mandarin oranges too, right? Little jars. Um, there's probably some added sugar in there or something, um, but you can always rinse them off or um, just drain the, drain the juice, put them in there. Uh, but the, the thing I wanted to highlight is it is citrus season. So all the citrus fruit is available right now. There's tons of different oranges out there. Um, so we've, we went ahead and did that. Um, I put about six. Yeah, I'm trying to make enough for you guys. I'm going to drain this out. Um, Jeff, we had a question. Go ahead, fact, question. Is there a particular salt that you used for the preserved lemon? I, is iodized salt okay? Um, I like kosher salt myself. I've never made preserved lemons with iodized salt. I don't use a lot of iodized salt. Um, I like kosher salt. I like the way it feels. It's coarse. It gives me more control over seasoning. Yeah, because I don't measure every single thing out. Um, where it's more about feel a lot of times. Um, at home, if you're measuring your salt, I, I don't think iodized would be a problem. Okay. 
Um, with the olives, we can leave them whole or we can, we can crush them with our hand. Again, we don't need a knife for that. We can just break them in half. Um, we're just going to dump them in here. Okay. Just, I don't know where we're at on time. Um, okay. So we have that. We're going to throw. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so we have our shea fennel, our mandarin oranges, we have our olives, we have um, our dressing that we're going to pour on here, we have some arugula that we're going to use. Um, let's grab a plate. Um, what I would do what I would do here is put the grain down first. If the grain is cold, you know, maybe ideally that's what you want, right? You want a cold grain. Um, you could mix that cold grain with all of this. I don't want to put a hot grain in here because we're going to add arugula. It's going to get all wilty and, and sad. So what we're going to do is put the, we're going to put the grain down first on the plate. Like so, and there's nothing wrong with a warm green salad. Um, in fact, it's probably probably a good idea. Um, smells nice and toasty. We're putting that down. I sure hope I have enough. Emily will be mad at me. Okay. All right, guys. Here we go. We're going to add our arugula. To my dressing? I added that, didn't I? Are you sure? I opened the lid and I looked at it, didn't I? Okay, I'm very just. You had me distracted with the broccoli. Good. Yeah, we're going to add the agave. All right. That's a lot. You, you probably wouldn't make this much at home. Um, I think this calls for a table, quarter tablespoon of agave. That's going to be fine. I'm going to whisk that up. Like so. We're going to mix it all in. We're going to pour our dressing over it. All right. Um, and then we're just going to toss it all with our dressing. We're going to set that on top, and it's going to be good. This is really, I love this salad. It's one of my favorite salads. Um, I, I like to eat it on top of pizza, too. I do, too. And this salad on top of pizza is really cool, like a white pizza. If you have white pizza, put this salad on top of it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. I like it. That's what I did. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, we ate spaghetti sandwiches on white bread. Yeah. Kind of weird. No mayo on it. No. No. Did put butter on it, though. Yeah. And there's your salad. I have plenty more here. Um, that's how you would serve it at home. Okay, Just with some grains. Um, I think it's nice. Yeah, it looks good. It holds up a long time. You can also mix the dressing the day before. Just don't put the arugula in there um, because the arugula will get wilty. So the next day, come out, mix the arugula with it, and you're good to go. Okay, let's quickly put this together. There you go. All right. You can see me. Okay. Whoops. Forgot one thing. Coconut milk. And nutritional yeast. There we go. There's coconut water in the bottom. We're going to add that. This has a lot of... This one's a good one. Any questions on that? 
Um, I'm going to have to puree this one because I have big chunks of broccoli in here. But remember, if you chop your broccoli small, no. No, take your time with your knife cuts on your carrot, celery, onion, and you will not have to puree the soup. Okay? We're going to add a little nutritional yeast. Pardon me one second. We may adjust that if we want. Okay, I'm gonna taste for salt and pepper. So I didn't add any. Thanks, Emily. We're gonna just add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. All right, now, I'm going to get another pot so I can put the soup into or it's pureed. Um, you know, if you're at home, you probably don't need to do this, but I'm making a lot of soup. So you could probably fit it all into the blender, right? And then just pour it back into the same pot. So you're not dirtying all these pots, right? That's, that's the goal in the kitchen too. We don't want a lot of dirty dishes um, to be stuck with at the end. So try to conserve. Um, this soup probably needs to cook you know, 20 minutes or so. If you roast the gar if you roast the broccoli like we did, give it about 20 minutes on the stove top. Um, yeah, should be pretty good. I forget anything. Okay. Just checking. All right. All right. Remember, hot soup in a blender. That's always a dangerous thing. Um, start out slow if you can. We don't want the top to blow off, um, so we don't overstuff it. Yep, looks good. My, my first demo I did here, I did a soup, and it was that little blender over there, and it was, it, it, I was really worried about it. I didn't know, like, how it's going to work or if it's going to work. And I had a hot soup in there and I could tell Emily was getting nervous in the back. And, um, luckily it, it, it all worked out. Yeah. So you talk about injuries in the kitchen. That's another one, you know, hot soup in a blender, um, tops going off, you know, young culinary students, um, will often make a mistake. Um, I take that cap off myself um, and just put a towel over the top. I like to do it that way. Um, hand blenders work well too. So if you get your broccoli nice and small, if you get a little smaller, the hand, the hand, the hand blender is not going to cut through big broccoli stems, but it will cut through the broccoli crowns if they're cooked nice and soft. You can just use an immersion blender and stick it in your pot. That's another way. Um, um, another quick and easy way to one more time. You know, not really, because if um, you're going to cut it up a little smaller, too. Um, so I, I would say about the same same amount of time. It's probably 20, 20 to 30 minutes. You can make it in a pressure cooker. That's always nice. Um, it works well. If you're not worried about the color, some people want a really green and vibrant broccoli soup. If that's what you're going for, um, you know, that requires a little bit of a different method. Um, you got to almost have all the soup prepared, cut the broccoli small, and then add it at the last minute after you added the coconut milk, add all those things. And then you want to add your broccoli if you want that really green broccoli. Um, that's really not what we're going for today. Um, this is it. We'll be ready here in a minute. Okay. Nice. So again, the beans help thicken it. Beans obviously have <coughs> full of 
nutrition as well. There's our broccoli soup. Now we're just going to check it and make sure that it has. Yep. It's nice. What's nice about it, you hardly taste the coconut milk. So you get that good fatty mouth feel from the coconut milk without adding heavy cream. You don't, you don't taste the coconut milk. Remember, unsweetened um, coconut milk. You don't want to use sweetened coconut milk. Um, you know, maybe a little bit more salt if you want. That's up to you guys. I'm not going to over, over season anything. Um, it tastes really good. I like it. Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. If you're interested in other live or recorded programs, please visit the online program tab of our website, cscatlanta.org. Or follow us on Facebook. We'll be sharing additional information on upcoming programs.